Hey, how's it going, everyone? Uh, I just wanted to do a quick little video on the Laravel, Laravel debug bar. Uh, I think it's a useful tool, and it's one I usually add to most projects. And so I just wanted to go over how, how to install it and some basic things you can do with it real quick. So this is a fresh installation of Laravel as a normally, uh, well, it's not 100% fresh, but for most purposes, it is basically fresh. Um, so the debug bar is basically a little tool that'll help you debug some things in your application if you want to. Instead of always using a D&D uh, &D function call, you can use the debug bar to output some uh, data or get uh, information about the amount of queries that are being run on a page. Um, it looks basically like this, but uh, let's just go ahead and install it and then we can uh, go over uh, how it works and what you can do with it. So while that's installing, we can go ahead and start setting up our uh, uh, providers so that those are installed when we need them, which is just to copy uh, this provider. And then we're also going to go ahead and get the uh, facade and add that. All right. So it looks like that's installed. We're going to save this now. We come back to our installation. We refresh, and now we can see that we get the uh, Laravel debug bar here on our on our uh, page. So we can see here how long this request took to be served, how much memory it's being used, the route that we're hitting, the off status, all this stuff is available just at a glance. If you want to minimize this, you can hit this little button and it'll bring it to the bottom of the page, which is pretty handy. Uh, if you want to see what views are being loaded into whatever view you're working on, you can look in the views tab. There's a queries tab. Right now, we're not executing any queries. Uh, messages, timeline shows you how long it took your application to do certain things. What exceptions maybe you're being um, experienced. If anything, I guess, was mailed. Uh, and then different auth gate. You can see what's in the session, which could be very handy. And also, you could see what's in the request, which is also handy. So what is the point of this uh, tool, right? You get all this kind of uh, information with a pretty simple include. I mean, all we really did was run, you know, Composer require the package, added a service provider and a uh, facade declaration in our app.php file. So it's pretty easy to add, but you get a lot of stuff with it. So one of the things that I thought was super helpful about it. So I have this beer database that I was using for a different uh, set of videos. That's why it's not 100% base installation of, in, of Laravel. It's got a little bit of data, a, a connection for a database, and then some data in that database. So really nothing, and like a couple models that I've generated just using the PHP Artisan make model command, which is nothing too fancy. Uh, so if we add this uh, little query using our beer database table, and we were to come back and reload this page, well now we can see that we have queries in the queries tab and we can see what's going on with those queries. We can see how long they take to execute uh, and then what is the actual like SQL query that's being executed by this statement, which is helpful when you're trying to learn eloquent, right? You could see well, where is this coming from and where is this query coming from? You can kind of figure all that out, which is really handy. Um, uh, but one of the things I thought was is super useful for that um, particular for the, for the debug bar package is, so let's say how many times, all right, so what we need to change one thing here. We need to pass along the beers and we're gonna name rename this to beers, not beer. Okay, so now this view should be getting those, which is just this welcome.php, uh, blade.php file, which we're all used to on almost every Laravel uh, application. Uh, so we're gonna say each beer as beer and let's say we just wanted to see what's in there, right? We've all done this die and dump beer thing. Actually, this is blade, so this needs to be in these. So we come back and we get our dump here, uh, and then we can expand that and we can see what's in here, right? We see the ID, the brewer ID, the name, all the stuff that's in the database, basically, because we know that we're when we take this out, right, we can see the query that's being executed is select all from beers, limit 10, whatever. And that's because we're doing paginate, whatever. doesn't matter. But uh, but see how we had to dump that and then this layer of all debug bar wasn't uh, loaded, right? It didn't actually load the rest of the view. It just dumps right there. So like you don't, 
when you're using DD, like, I, I mean, I use it all the time. I'm not trying to say you shouldn't use it, but you're ending the application right at that point. So if you wanted to dump out a couple different things, you know, you could, you could just come in here and say dump instead of die and dump, right? Which is what D and D stands for. Uh, but then it's over, it's overgoing or over, uh, it's loading on top of the de debug bar. And so therefore, you know, we can't quite see what's going on, uh, behind it makes it kind of a pain. Um, and you may want to dump out, you know, multiple things. So one of the things that you can do is you can actually, the debug bar actually provides some little helper, helper, uh, methods. Uh, so for example, you can use this debug bar info object, and let's just say we wanted to do that, or actually, actually, I guess you can do it here too. So we're going to replace this here, the dump, and we're going to pass in the beer to the debug bar info, and we're going to see what that does for us in terms of uh, being able to see, uh, oh, did I put a, yeah, okay, that doesn't need to be there. All right, so now all of that the dump stuff is gone, but if we look in, now we have 10 messages, right? And since we know we are paginating 10, we're getting 10 beers, so these, are, and we're dumping, we're using the debug bar to uh, info those, so we can see kind of, okay, looks like we're those messages or that info is coming to messages. So if we look, we see, okay, we have 10 beer objects, so that lines up, we can start seeing some of the data, like primary key, key type, and then it kind of gets truncated. So if we click on one of these, we can expand and look, we can see ID, brewer ID, name, hocus pocus. So we can see um, all of our data and we're not messing with our actual layout, which means that we don't have to like uh, dump, reload, look at what data is there, and then come back. Like we could theoretically try some stuff and still be able to, to view our app while being able to n navigate this data, which I think is super helpful. Um, so one of the things, uh, this may not be this, the most helpful having this here. Uh, so we're going to try to do this maybe a different way. We're going to try to do it just in the essentially controller or the, the uh, closure from this route. And then in here, Let's do a beer and then we're going to call the brewery and maybe the name. So uh, this is referencing this brewery as an object, which is a relationship on our beer model. And we're going to reference the name and output that here. Okay, so now we're getting a bunch of brewery names, you know, one after the other. No styling, nothing like that. But we only dumped out one object, right? The length aware paginator, paginator which is our little beer uh, query that we did. And if we open it up, right, we can still see all of the information in there. Uh, I guess it does not come with the brewery relationships or I guess it doesn't expand that. Uh, so, but let's say we wanted to see uh, the brewery in the debug bar. So I guess we could do, this probably isn't really where you would want to do it, but uh, you, you know, you can. Info and beer brewery, right? All right, so we come back. Now we're getting those. Now we're getting each of those, but now keeping track of which one this relates to might be a little tricky, um, but you know, regardless. Okay, another thing that I wanted to show, other than the fact that you can view this data inside the debug bar, is now we're getting all of these queries from the breweries call that we're calling on our beer object, right? So each one of those now is making a call to another SQL call. And if we look, right, we can see, okay, this uh, brewery here is being loaded twice, even though we have that data. So I think one of the things we could do if we wanted to, uh, this is a, may not be the best example, but let's check it out. Uh, so if we wanted to, we could come in here to our beer model and we could say uh, we wanted to do some eager loading, right? Then we can load this property with and with an array of um, basically values that match the name of the relationship method that we want to eagerly load. 
And then if we do that, we come back. Now that query jumped from 12 to three, right? So it's eagerly loading all of those relationships, uh, which saves us nine queries, right? And that's, that's pretty powerful. Now, if you didn't have this debug bar, and all of a sudden your app kind of was going slow, then you're not going to necessarily notice that you're loading all of these queries. So those are all, you know, those all add up. So let's see if we can, uh, if we turn this off and we reload, doesn't make a huge difference on our load times, but uh, I think with enough data, right? This, maybe this isn't a lot enough data and maybe this is just, you know, there's not like a lot of traffic. So, the server isn't being, uh, doesn't have a whole lot of load right now, but this shows that you can use this debug bar to kind of see maybe what's happening with your app. You know, what is taking something so long, uh, could look into uh, like, say I've had it, you know, a couple apps where I was working on before I added the debug bar, uh, where I was doing over like a hundred or 150 queries or something on a page. And I didn't even realize it. And it was just, you know, something as simple as I had to eager load a relationship and everything, you know, made it a little bit faster. So it's just, uh, there's different things you can do with the debug bar. It's really easy to add and it provides you this nice kind of easy interface to interact with your data. And you don't always have to uh, kill your application while it's running in order to dump out data and see that uh, on the page. So anyway, uh, just wanted to show kind of what the debug bar was like, how to install it, and some basics on how to use it. There's probably more advanced things you can do. You can probably get into some of these, you know, gate session stuff. Um, but I just wanted to, to give you guys the heads up as to what it was and how to use it. So, all right, I'll catch you guys next time.